Uh, this is another uh, uh, video for introduction to the uh, finite difference time domain method. Uh, I'm Shan Hui Fan from Flex Compute. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about using uh, the FTTD method uh, in the context of integrated photonics application. Uh, in particular, uh, we'll be simulating uh, this device called the Maxander interferometer. So uh, what you see here is a uh, viewing from the top of how the device look like. The red regions here correspond to uh, a silicon waveguide. And this is sitting on a silicon dioxide substrate. And the other side of the waveguide is air. And uh, this device uh, is uh, uh, used as an optical switch. So uh, suppose you change the refractive index of silicon a little bit in this region as indicated as phase shifter, then depending on the index value of the phase shifter, when light is injected, for example, from the top waveguide here, it may either come up at the bottom waveguide or come up at the top waveguide. So this device uh, operates as an optical switch and is a device that's actually very important for uh, a wide range of uh, integrated photonic applications. These days, for example, uh, it is used uh, in both for quantum computing purposes, uh, as well as for neuromorphic uh, optical computing on a chip. So uh, I'm gonna show you uh, some of the uh, consideration in simulating this waveguide, uh, this uh, particular device. And for that purpose, uh, the first thing we'd like to talk about is to uh, effectively inject the mode uh, into the waveguide. Uh, so therefore, we will talk about uh, first about simulating a, a straight single waveguide. And so uh, here is a section of that straight waveguide. And uh, what we like to do is to inject a single mode into this waveguide. So uh, in other words, we would like to set up the simulation so that it really excites a single mode that uh, perfectly propagate down the waveguide. Now, uh, for this purpose, we set up the computational cell. As usual, we surround the waveguide with the perfectly matched layer boundary uh, so that a wave propagate away from the computational domain is absorbed. To perfectly absorb a waveguide mode, it is important to extend both the waveguide and the substrate into the PML region. So in addition to the consideration on the PML, uh, the other important consideration is to use what's called a modal source. In other words, uh, uh, to get a clean simulation, it will be very advantageous to use an eigenmode source defined on the plan to inject a specific mode along the forward direction. So uh, for a waveguide that look like this, you can use a eigenmode solver to solve for the guided mode of the waveguide. For this particular waveguide, it has a fundamental TE mode with the electric field along the Y direction. And this is the mode that we would like to excite, but it has other higher order mode as well. So taking from the modal source here as computed by the eigenmode solver, uh, one can use an FTTD code, a modal source to selectively excite one of these modes. For example, to selectively excite the first order TE mode. And uh, uh, in this case, here is a cross-sectional view through the center of the waveguide. The green line here correspond to the position of the modal source. And you can see that the use of modal source uh, perfectly generate the TE mode as we have indicated in the earlier slide as well. One interesting aspect is that the modal source actually allow you to do directional excitation. You can see that the field is perfectly launched to the right of the source and there's exactly zero field to the left of the source. Now you can contrast the behavior of the modal source with that of a dipole source. So if you just put a dipole into the waveguide, 
Well, you see quite a bit different in the field distribution. First of all, uh, the dipole source is not directional launching. So you, it's actually launching wave both to the right and to the left of the source. The second is that you can see that in this case, the polarization of the dipole is such that it would selectively excite a TE mode, but it takes some propagation distance before the mode settle into a perfect TE mode profile. During this process where the mode profile settles, you can see radiation into the substrate. And to further illustrate the difference between the modal source and the point dipole source, we can perform a simulation where we compute the flux going through a flux plane perpendicular to the waveguide centered at the center of the waveguide. So uh, what we plot here is the flux as function of distance of the flux point from the source. In the case of a modal source, because we launch a single waveguide mode perfectly, uh, the flux basically remain the same as the propagation distance changes. Whereas if you put a point dipole source, the flux initially decays uh, because the, the dipole is not perfectly matched with the mode. So there's some radiation that has to go out. And then after some propagation distance, the flux settles, at which point the mode settles into the desired mode. So uh, the important thing here, in addition to this extra propagation distance with uh, increased computational cost, is the fact that as the mode settles, there are radiation into the computational domain, and that's a source of a unwanted electromagnetic interference inside the computation. So if you would like to get a high quality calculation, of the behavior of the waveguide system, uh, it would be interesting to use the modal source so that you don't have such radiation. So uh, with this discussion, now let's come back to the simulation of a Maxander. So uh, the uh, movie that I'm playing here uh, correspond to the case where the refractive index of the phase shifter is chosen so that the wave is perfectly launched or perfectly routed uh, to the top waveguide. And in this case, you can see very, uh, that the wave is very well confined in the waveguide. There's very little wave. You can barely see anything outside the waveguide. And also that the field uh, at the output end uh, retain a, essentially a perfect single mode profile. Uh, these characteristic uh, is the sign of uh, the waveguide uh, device that's very well designed. It is also a sign that the setup of the simulation is done correctly so that you don't have unwanted electromagnetic interference. Now, uh, to demonstrate the switch behavior, you can change the phase shifter dielectric function, and in which case, uh, as the wave goes through the device, uh, it's perfectly routed, but now to the bottom waveguide. So the system uh, really behaves as an excellent optical switch. So uh, with that, uh, let me start here. And uh, uh, here we talked about some of the consideration of using FDTD uh, to simulate integrated photonic devices. Uh, uh, thank you for watching this video.